Okay, so now we're going to start talking about oriented movements. So these are going to be, um, you know, just a change in the, like, you know, movement pattern of an organism. So the first one is going to be kinesis, and this is going to be an activity, a change in activity rate due to some sort of stimulus, right? Um, so the example that um, is so famous with this is so bugs, um, and it's probably easier if I show you a picture. So what happens is you've got these little so bugs. You've seen these guys. We call them roly polies, right? And so what happens with these is um, they do not like it when it gets too dry. That's why you always find them like under like a wet piece of like wood or like a wet rock or something like that. So if they end up in an area where it's humid or um, dry, all of a sudden they will start moving. They have no idea where they're going, so they're just kind of moving, moving in every single direction until their chances increase to find a humid spot, right? So if you think about it, staying still, they're not going to find that humid spot. But moving, even if it's aimlessly, they might find a humid spot. So that's going to be kinesis. Now, on the other side of that is going to be something called taxis. Taxis is going to be an oriented move it, movement towards or away from something. So now you're not just moving around aimlessly. You're going towards something for a reason or away something for a reason. So this example I have here in this picture is going to be trout. Trout tend to orient themselves upstream, right? And think about it. Why would it be a good idea for them to orient themselves facing upstream? Well, if you think about it, um, prey is going to be floating along, and so they can just open their mouth and the prey could come in. Um, predators also might be coming down the um, stream, and so they could see them coming. Um, could also be easier to maintain their position that way. But they're orienting themselves, so they're always facing upstream, right? Another example could be if we were all out hiking and all of a sudden we heard a gunshot nearby. We're probably not going to run towards it. We're probably going to run away from it because we know it's dangerous and that could cause us to not survive, right? So that would be another example of taxis. Okay, so going back to the notes, there's all the examples there. Um, another one, migration. Now you're familiar with migration, I'm sure, and that's going to be that regular long distance change in location, right? So you've got whales doing that. Um, you've got, you know, fish doing that, you've got birds doing it, and um, a lot of science has gone into how they know where they're going. Um, so a lot of things that live in the ocean will use the sun or the moon or the stars to actually help them navigate. Um, moon phases is going to be a huge one with that because that actually affects tides. Um, Earth's magnetic field is another thing that they can use. Um, pigeons have um, almost like a, like a compass in their brain, and they've done experiments where they've actually removed that section that they know is linked to that, and they have no idea where they're going. But once that's in there, they actually do. So it's pretty interesting how they know what direction to go. Um, okay. So behavioral rhythms are going to be things that are going to be like a regular change, like a daily cycle that's going to happen. Um, could be daily, could be yearly, however um, it's split up. So if it's going to be daily, we call that a circadian rhythm, um, and that's going to be based on light and dark cycles. So most of us are on a 24-hour clock that causes us to, most of us, to um, be awake when it's light out and to get tired when it's dark out, right? Um, so that's going to be a circadian rhythm. Super cool stuff going into that where they can actually manipulate it and they can get like plants to think that it's only been a day or you know that it's been a day but it's only been like six hours so within 24 hours the plant has thought that it's been four days and so they can actually make them grow faster over a shorter period of time um, they do that with fish farms too indoor fish farms they can do the light and dark cycles and mess with them that way too to get them to grow faster so really interesting stuff um, and then you have circanial rhythms which are going to be something that's going to be on a yearly basis right when things go into heat and that kind of stuff. Okay, let's talk about signaling and communication. So a signal is going to be a stimulus transmitted from one animal to another. So if I'm waving to you, that is a signal. We are not communicating until you acknowledge my signal and wave back, right? So then we have done something called communication, which means I know that you've accepted what I've sent and um, then we've got some sort of a dialogue going, right? So communication can happen in four different ways. Some of these you may not be aware of. Um, the first one that I just gave an example of is visual, right? So that could be movement, like me waving, or there's definitely more foul ways of letting someone know how you feel about them with your hands. Um, and then um, colors changing, um, you know, dances, that type of stuff. 
Then you have chemical communication, and that's going to be in the form of pheromones. So pheromones are going to be chemicals that something could release that is going to say, hey, I'm ready to mate, or um, I'm angry, or I'm scared, or we should get out of here. Those are all going to be pheromones. And it's really interesting. There's actually companies that are making perfumes and colognes that are like, claiming to have pheromones in them that, you know, are letting the opposite sex know that you're interested. So it's pretty hilarious. Um, <clears throat> so, and I actually have some pictures of all this stuff for you guys. Um, so here's a visual signal right here. And um, this is going to be <clears throat> a fiddler crab. And it's kind of funny because what the male does is he actually waves his big claw out there to be like, check it out. I can make a really nice house and I've got good genes if I can do that. Um, and then you know, that hope, hopefully will lure the female over to them. And um, in this case, size does matter. Um, so the size of the claw is important. Um, and then pheromones, bees, you know, all insects are really known to use a lot of pheromones, ants and stuff like that. Um, then tactile is going to be the next one that we haven't talked about, and that's going to be using touch. So a lot of mammals use touch. We definitely do. When someone's upset, we hug them. You know, we put our hand on their back or something like that. Um, ants also use tactile and they use pheromones a lot. And then auditory obviously is going to be, you know, bird calls or it's what I'm doing right now, talking, right? So those are going to be all the different forms of communication that we actually have and that we can use. So in the next video, we're going to start talking about what happens when you get used to um, some sort of behavior.